this video, we're going to look at how we can find volume when we take um, functions and revolve them around either the x or the y axis or even another another line. So here's a graph, y equals root x. We're going to take this function and we're going to spin it around the x axis. And again, this is hard to show on a, on a two dimensional graph, but essentially you will get a shape that looks like this. Okay, this is the graph. They got the graph y equals four square root x here. Uh, looks like this. So here's our y axis, here's our x axis. Um, looks like this is going up to 10. What we're gonna do is, yeah, we're gonna take this, this graph, we're gonna uh, rotate it or revolve it around the x axis. And so, can see that if we did that with the graph that would spin around like this and we want to know what the volume of that thing is so the shape would actually end up being a solid that would look something like this and so you have to we have to ask ourselves well what what are these shapes that we're adding up well I think it's not too hard to see that these would be a bunch of circles that we're adding up here to make this solid. Okay, so we need to be adding up some circles. Well, then how do we find the area of a circle? Pi times the radius squared. And what would be the radius of the circle? It would just be the y value or f of x of the function. So, we can say this the volume of a solid would is, when it is rotated about the x-axis would be given by the integral from a to b of pi r squared these are circles that we're adding up and the radius would be the y value the radius of this circle right here oops, would just be f of x so we're adding up a bunch of circles pi times the radius squared and if we did that we would find the volume of that particular object. All right, let's consider this one then. Find the volume of the solid that is obtained when the region under the curve y equals x squared over the inter interval zero to two is revolved about the x-axis. So if we're revolving something about the x-axis, we're gonna go from zero to two, that's our interval. And we are adding up circles, which is pi times the radius our radius is f of x squared. So this will be the integral from zero to two of pi times, and the radius would be our y value, which is just x squared, squared with respect to x. So this would be the integral from zero to two of pi times x to the power of four. So fairly easy, easy one to integrate. Add one, divide by the exponent from zero to two. So two to the power five, 32 fifths pi would be our, our volume when we revolve that about the x-axis. Let's look at another example. Find the volume of the solid obtained by revolving the region bounded by y equals x cubed, y equals x to the power eight. Let's just do a real quick sketch of this. We know y equals x cubed looks something like this. And y equals eight would be a horizontal line up here. Here's eight and x equals zero would be our vertical line here. So we're talking about this region here, but we're gonna revolve this about the y axis. Okay, so then this kind of shape would be over here. When we revolve this and our circles this time are gonna go this way. So again, nothing particularly different here. This time our volume is gonna be um, the integral from A to B of pi times F of Y squared with respect to Y. And A to B would be the um, spread on our y-axis, on our y-axis here now. So what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to write this function as x equals a function of y. 
Okay, so let's, well, let's do that first. So we have x cubed equals y. So then simply x would be the cube root of y. So volume will equal the integral um, from 0 to 8. This would be on our y-axis of pi times the cube root of y. Let's write that as y to the 1 3rd squared with respect to y. And another fairly easy integral to do. Um, well, let's write this one more time just to put that exponent together. So combining those would be 2 thirds. And then integrating, we will add 1 to the exponent. So adding 1 to this would be a 3 over 3. So that's 5 over 3 divided by 5 thirds or multiply by 3 fifths would give us this from 0 to 8. So 3 fifths pi. Then substituting 8 in here, um, I guess 8 to the power of, the cube root of 8 would be, oh, we can do this. Cube root of 8 is 2, because we're just doing the cube root of 8 to the power of 5. So cube root of 8 would be 2. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So we would have 96 pi over 5 as our volume if we were revolving that about the, the y-axis. Okay, let's look at this one. A little bit different here now. We've got two functions. We've got f of x equals x squared plus 1 and g of x equals x. So we have two functions and we're going to find the volume of that solid um, when we revolve that area about the x-axis on the interval from 0 to 2. So let's, this is a little, a little bit different. Let's take a look at this in our, in our app. Okay, so here we have our function, x squared plus 1. That's, I guess that's the blue one there. And our second function, g of x, is x. And we are going from 0 to 2. And we are going to take this, so this little area in between here is going to get revolved around the x-axis. So it's going to kind of do this sort of thing this time. Okay, and so if we show that surface in the rotation, we're going to get a shape like this that's going to have a hole in the middle here. Um, so kind of like a bell shape, I guess, but with a hole in here. And so what are we adding up now? Well, we'd be adding up some washers. They would be a washer with a hole in here. And how do we find the area of a washer? So a washer is basically like a circle on the outside minus a little cir smaller circle on the inside. And so here's how we could find the volume. The integral of may to b of pi times f of x squared. Now again, f of x is going to have to be our top function minus g of x squared, which would of course be the radius of the, the circle on the bottom. So if we have two functions, it would be pi r squared minus pi r squared. They've just factored the pi out here, but basically this, the um, circle from the outside minus the circle on the inside. So let's look at this one again here. So we've got our outside graph, x squared plus 1, and our inside graph, we'll just put a little quick sketch here, x squared plus 1 would look like this, and y equals x would look like this, and we'll pretend that's 2, that's 1, and so we are going to need the radius of the outside circle, and here's the radius of the inside circle, so that's g of x, that's f of x, so volume would equal the integral from 0 to 2 of pi times f of x squared minus pi times g of x squared. And again, because we've got the common pi in there, it's kind of cus makes customary a little bit simpler to just have that factored out. And then we don't have two of them to deal with. Two pies to deal with. So it would look like so. So in our case, we would have the integral from 0 to 2 of 
pi times f of x, which is x squared plus 1 squared minus g of x, which is x squared. And we're going to have to integrate this function. Well, we're going to have to square this out here. Oops. So x squared plus 1 squared would be x4 plus 2x squared plus 1. Take away an x squared. And we'll collect some like terms before we integrate. And we're ready to integrate now. So x4 would be x to the 5 divided by 5 plus x cubed divided, oops, x cubed divided by 3 plus 1. And we're doing that from 0 to 2. So putting 2 into here would be 32 fifths plus 8 thirds plus 1 minus putting 0 in would just leave 1. So just saving a little bit of time here. 32 fifths plus 8 thirds is 136 fifteenths. So we'll say 136 pi over 15 would be the volume of that shape when we rotated it about the x-axis. Let's look at one, one more example here. So find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the functions f of x equals x squared plus 1 and g of x equals x over the interval from 0 to 2 about the line y equals 8. So now we're not revolving it about the x-axis, or we're not revolving it about the y-axis. We're going to revolve it around the line y equals 8. So let's take a look at this in Desmos, just so you have a um, graphical picture of what we're looking at here. Okay, so in here we got y equals x squared plus 1. Um, the red one, there's our parabola. We got our blue line, y equals x, and we got our line that we're going to revolve everything about. It is way up here at y equals 8. So we're basically just going to have this little area here between 0 and 2, and we're going to revolve that around y equals 8. So we're going to have to look at, it's still going to be a washer. We're going to have the radius of the outside. So the outside now is going to be the bottom function here because this is actually our top because we're revolving around y equals 8. So, so the, the larger radius is going to be the blue function and the smaller radius is going to be the, the red function, the parabola. So here's a little picture here. So we're going to revolve this around the line y equals 8. So this would be our outer radius, which is our g of x function and this would be our inner radius which is x squared plus 1. So our volume is going to equal the integral from 0 to 2 because we're integrating from 0 to 2 of pi times this distance here. I'm going to call that big R squared. We've got to figure out what that radius would be. Um, minus pi times little r squared, the smaller inside radius. So let's look at the outside radius. We have to find this distance right here. We've got to find that distance right there. Well, the distance from the green line to the bottom is 8. We know that's 8. And so then all we're going to be subtracting here is g of x. So if we took 8, that whole distance, and minus the y value of here, then we would be getting what we want here. This is big radius. This is little radius. So volume is going to equal the integral from 0 to 2 of pi times 8 minus, um, bottom function was g, g of x. That will be our radius right there for the big radius. And for this little radius, the inside part of our, of our circle, well, that would be the same thing. 8 all the way to the bottom, but minus f of x 
which is this piece here, that will leave us with, with that little r. So this will be eight minus f of x squared. Just gonna leave another bracket there with respect to x. Okay, so then substituting in those functions, eight minus g of x was x, so that's eight minus x all squared minus eight minus f of x, f of x was x squared plus one squared dx. Okay, some number crunching to do. First of all, we're gonna have to multiply all this out. So 64 minus 16x plus x squared minus, and then this would actually just be seven, so eight minus one, this would be seven minus x squared, all squared. So we still gotta square that out. So this would be equals zero from two pi, 64 minus 16 X plus X squared minus 49. Um, this would be negative 14, but we've got a minus in here. So this would be plus 14 X squared. And then this would be minus X um, to the power of four. So that's that all squared out and the minus sign brought into it. Okay, let's collect some like terms here. Um, we're gonna have a negative X four uh, we got some x squares in here. We're going to have 15 of those and a minus 16x and 64 minus 49 is 15. Okay, now we're ready to integrate. So this would be negative x5 over 5. Uh, this would be 15x cubed over 3. Uh, let's just call that 5 then. And then minus 16x squared over 2 would be minus 8x squared plus 15x, all from 0 to 2. So we're going to put 2 into all of these things. And then the nice thing is we put 0 in, we're going to get 0. Uh, so we've got to put 2 in and calculate all this out. Um, and that's what I've, I've already done that here. So that's this here. So we get 158 fifths when we put two into all of these values, 158 fifths. So we have 158 pi over five as our volume when we revolve that around the line y equals eight. So that's why it's called volume by disks and washers. So if you have a, if you have a function, just a single function, and we revolve that around, say, the x-axis, we're going to have a disk. And if you have two functions, and we revolve this around the x-axis, we will have some washers. But essentially, we're just finding, uh, we're just adding up a bunch of disks or washers, depending on the situation, um, and using integration to add up those things.